Maharaj, we have around 20 devotees on call now. Okay. Omagyan timiran nasya gana jana salakaya chaksun militam yena tasmai shri guru vinamaha shri chaitanya mano bistam stapti tam yena bhutale swayam rupa kadam mayam dadati swam padanti kam nama om vishnu padaya krishna pastaya bhutale shri mati Vedanta Swami Tinamane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvari Pacharine Nirase Sasunya Vari Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakopa Tarubistya Kripa Sindhu Beva Japatitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namaha Namaha Jaisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai So I thought I'd speak on today's occasion which is the disappearance day of Sri Ramananda Roy um, um, Sri Ramananda Roy is one of the uh, more intimate associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his interaction with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very nicely described in the eighth chapter of Madhya Leela in which it describes a very confidential discussion between Lord Chaitanya and Sri Ramananda Roy. Uh, Ramananda Roy's identity has been given by the Acharyas, as mentioned in Gorgo Nadeshti Pika, as being uh, the Gopi Vishaka, one of Radharani's most intimate girlfriends. Lalita and Vishaka were the two most intimate girlfriends of Radharani. And Ramananda Roy is known as Vishaka. And sometimes they say that he was actually uh, Arjun, the Apandavas. So you get different opinions. But the more, what we say, contemporary opinion and the more popular one that succeeded that he was actually the Gopi Vishaka. And you saw towards the end of the Lord Chaitanya's Leela, when he was mostly experiencing the happiness of intimacy in a near Jan Bhajan, when he was more or less going deeper into his own consciousness and experiencing Krishna. His two associates were uh, Ramananda Roy and Sarup Damodar. And we also know that Sarup Damodar is the Gopi Lalita. So Lalita and Vishaka took the form of Ramananda Roy and Sarup Damodar Goswami. And of course, we know Lord Chaitanya is Krishna, but he's in the mood of Srimati Radharani. So pacifying Lord Chaitanya's ecstatic moods towards the end of his leelas was mostly done by the glorification of Krishna by Ramananda Roy and Shubhdamadar by singing the uh, glorification of the great songs, poets, and uh, expressions of Vyap Vyapati, Chandidas, Jayadev Goswami, those were the more esoteric poets describing Radha and Krishna's intimate leelas in Sri Vrindavan Dham. So those two persons, Ramananda Roy and Srubhdamadar were very intimately connected. Srubhdamadar was a lifelong brahmachari. He didn't take sannyas, although he had the opportunity. He wanted to remain in the brahmachari and uh, Ramananda Roy was actually a grihastha. When Lord Chaitanya was on his way to South India, 
uh, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya said, you know, I had met this one person, his name is Ramananda Roy, he's in a place called Kabur. Please meet him. When I first met him, I didn't understand who he was or what, he, what was his spiritual practice. But now I can understand everything that he is actually a great devotee. After learning everything from you, I understand that he is very special. So I'm sure you'll find great happiness in meeting Ramananda Roy. So the Lord did. He purposely went to that area of Kavur, which was um, Vishakapatnam. I think it's also called Vishakapatnam. And um, the Lord took his bath in the Kaveri River. And while he was bathing, uh, there was this procession, kind of like a royal procession. And one governor was being carried on the palaquin, and that governor was Ramananda Roy. When Lord Chaitanya understood and saw who it was, and then he saw Lord Chaitanya, their intimate relationship was awakened. And uh, they couldn't restrain their emotions, and they came together embracing each other. Now, when the palaquin carriers saw that this sannyasi is embracing the governor who is actually only a sudra, he's not really a, in the higher caste. They were curious. And then Lord Chaitanya understood their minds and so he became calm. But later he told Ramananda Moore in morning, more, Ramananda Moore, Ramananda Roy that tomorrow morning we should meet together. So that meeting has been nicely discussed in the Chaitanya Charitamrita in Madhya Lila chapter 8, where Lord Chaitanya asks questions to Ramananda Roy in relationship to devotional service. And there's also a discussion between what is the highest principle or highest expression of devotional service taking it from the very basics, from Banashram Dharma, all the way up to some of the more uh, mixed devotional practices, finally coming to pure devotional service in the different rasas, and then finally mo moving into Madhurya Ras, and then into Madhurya Ras with the gopis of Vrindavan, and then from there, Srimati Radharani's Bhakti. That beautiful discussion illustrating the different levels of bhakti by Ramananda Roy was quoting verses from the Shastras and Lord Chaitanya was always asking him, is there something higher? Is there something more? If there is, please speak. Uh, and then of course, Ramananda Roy understood and he kept mentioning going higher, higher, and higher, higher, higher until he came to Radharani. After he glorified Shimati Radharani as the pinnacle of all devotion, the Lord said, if there's something else, please speak more. And Ramananda Roy was astonished to hear such a question. He said, no one has ever inquired beyond this point. <laughs> but then he understood the question. Then he started to describe the glories of Lord Sri Krishna. And then it gets really intimate then. So that discussion is nicely narrated. So this was a, a kind of an intimacy. And of course, after some time, Lord Chaitanya went back to Jagannath Puri. And Ramananda Roy, after meeting Lord Chaitanya, no longer had a taste for any of his material uh, duties anymore. And the Lord also wrote him a letter and told him to come to Jagannath Puri and stay with him. And so when he was working under the guidance of King Prataparudra at the time, and when King Prataparudra heard that Ramananda Roy wanted to leave his post to go to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he gave him double the amount of salary. He said, because you're going to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not only do do you not get salary, but you get double. <laughs> so he doubled his salary and then he left and then 
he became an intimate associate of Lord Chaitanya. And there are many, many wonderful pastimes, especially in the later part of the Leelas. Uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami mentions four devotees that no one should try to imitate, particularly the certain qualities that they would exhibit in devotional service. And he mentioned those four. He said, one should never try to imitate the humility of Sanatana Goswami. Sanatana Goswami was known as the personification of humility, along with Srila Haridas Thakur, of course. But Sanatana Goswami is mentioned in that category. When Lord Chaitanya was in Puri, Sanatana Goswami wanted to meet him. And so he did, but he took a different route <coughs> that normally people travel to get where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was. And then when he got there, he offered his obeisances and the Lord noticed on the bottom of his feet, they were all red and blistered. And he was really shocked. And he said to Sanatana Goswami, how did you get here? What route did you take? And he said, I went along the beach. This was in the month of Jaist, which is in the month of July, when the sands are burning hot from the sun. So he took, he went along the beach route. And Lord Chaitanya said, well, why did you do that? Why didn't you take the route in front of, that goes past the Jagannath Puri temple? And Sanatana Goswami said, I didn't want to contaminate the pujaris who are going in and out to serve Lord Jagannath. So he was feeling so low and he didn't want the pujaris who were busy serving the Lord to see him. And so out of his natural humility, he avoided that route and went along the beach. Um, one should not try to imitate the, uh, the uh, tolerance of Srila Haridas Thakur. Srila Haridas Thakur was so tolerant that he was being beaten in 22 marketplaces, being threatened, unless you give up just chanting of the holy name and take to your, your birthright as, as being born in a Mohammedan family, then you should be tortured. This was done by the Kasi along with the, you know, the head Mullah. But Haridas Thakur, he was so attached to chanting, he was absorbed in chanting, his life was chanting. He knew nothing else but chanting the holy name. He said, even if I wanted to give up the chanting, I couldn't because my whole body is always chanting the Hare Krishna Maha, Maha Mantra. Even if you take my body and cut it into pieces, each of the pieces will be chanting Hare Krishna. Well, they felt insulted when he responded that way. So they condemned him to be bit, beaten in marketplaces until he died. But when he was being beaten, he was simply chanting the holy names of the Lord. And he tolerated the beatings in such a way that he didn't even care what they were doing. He wasn't actually feeling any pain at all because Lord Chaitanya had protected him from any of the difficulty. And he simply chanted and at the same time he was praying for those who were beating him, his torturers to receive the mercy of the holy name. So it says no one should try to imitate the tolerance of Srila Haridas Thakur. The third one was Damodar Pandit. Damodar Pandit was very strict in following rules and regulations. And Lord Chaitanya, although he was a sannyasi, he was very strict. But sometimes he would let down his strictness when it came to his relationships with his devotees. For instance, when one, there was one lady, she was a widow and she had a, a son, a young son, very young. And he became attracted to Lord Chaitanya and he would like to go to see Lord Chaitanya. So his mother would let him go. But Damodar Pandit didn't like that because he, he said, well, this, 
he told the boy, don't come anymore. So he sent the boy away and he didn't come. When Lord Chaitanya found that out, he became unhappy. And then Damodar Pandit said, well, my dear Lord, you are a sannyasi and he, she, he's the son of a widow. How will this look? This will not look good at all. You will be criticized for breaking sannyas. The Lord didn't like that. But Damodar Pandit was very, what we say, rules and regulations when it came to etiquette. And he would instruct the Lord. So it said no one should try to imitate the position of Damodar Pandit, who was always concerned that the Lord was following the principles correctly. And Lord Chaitanya tolerated Damodar Pandit. But no one else could do it or, do, or even dare to do it. And then the last one was Ramananda Roy. Ramananda Roy, when he came to Jagannath Puri, he found himself in a occupation. He was a dance instructor. He knew dance well, and he knew the, the various kinds of dances that they do in order to please the Lord. One is the Odissi dancing that is done in Jagannath Puri. So he would also teach young girls how to dance. And at the same time, before he would teach them, he would help to prepare their physical bodies by massaging them, their bodies in different ways. And so he would be touching the bodies of these girls and giving them different massages and stuff like that. And, but his mind was completely undisturbed. It says his mind was like stone. He felt no emotional attraction or agitation in doing that work he was doing because he was meditating on his service as he used to do that service in the spiritual world to give massages to Srimati Radharani in his mood as Vishaka. And so Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says, no one should try to imitate Ramananda Roy. If they do, they will immediately fall down. So this was, this was uh, some of the pastimes of Sri Ramananda Roy, very intimate associate of the Lord. And the Lord spent most of his time, towards the end of his time on earth, with two persons, that was Ramananda Roy and Sirup Damanar Goswami. Unbeknownst to most devotees in ISKCON and maybe even around the world, Srila Prabhupada wrote a book in 1940s, I think it was 1947, something around there. And he, which was the discussion between Lord Chaitanya and Ramananda Roy, which was based on the Chaitanya Charitamita, chapter number eight. And in that, Prabhupada, uh, that book is in, I don't know, I know, I think it's out of publications now, but um, I have a copy myself, a personal copy. And Prabhupada wrote this book. And actually it was a manuscript later turned into a book. And it's really an interesting discussion between Ramananda Roy and Srub Damodar. So that's probably the one of the first books that Srila Prabhupada ever wrote was back in the 1940s. Of course, later on he wrote Easy Journey to Other Planets. That was towards the end of the 50s. And then after when he became the guru of ISKCON, he, he wrote more than 70 books. <laughs> 80 books, more than 80 books on Krishna consciousness. Okay, so this is a little bit about Sri Ramananda Roy. And if you like to comment, then or ask any questions, please do so.
Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much Maharaj. That was very nice to uh, listen about Ramananda Rai today and thank you so much Maharaj. Uh, dear devotees, if you have any questions, comments, if you want to share anything, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, my question is, uh, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu introduced himself with Ramananda Roy, why he mentioned himself as a Mayavadi Sanyasi? Well, he, met, he, he took Sanyas from Keshava Bharati, who was in the Mayavadi Sampradaya. And that was the tradition at the time. So to be recognized as a sannyas, he took the Mayavad sannyas, but he wasn't a Mayavadi. So it appears that he was just giving his identity according to his connection with the Mayavadi culture or the Mayavadi line like that. But he would, there's also a, a part of humility there that he wanted to hear from Ramananda Roy what is the principles of bhakti all the way up to the highest point. So presenting himself as somebody who is nija, small, nija bhakti or small bhakta. The Lord showed that by, that was a statement of humility. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hi. Yeah, so that's one of the most intimate associates of Lord Chaitanya. And that exchange between Ramananda Roy and uh, Lord Chaitanya goes on to other subjects. The Lord asks him, well, what is the greatest form of unhappiness? And Ramananda Roy rightly replies, the greatest unhappiness is separation from the devotee. So he illustrated that separation from the pure devotee of the Lord causes one to be, it's a spiritual unhappiness, which is the unhappiness of the soul's longing for that association. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, I have a small question. Uh, you mentioned about uh, four devotees uh, whom we should uh, we should not imitate the qualities from Sanatan Goswami for his humility and uh, uh, who are the other ones? Shila Haridas Thakur for his tolerance, Damodar Pandit for his strictness in following rules and regulations. So Ramananda Rai, you mentioned the, how he was meditating on Radharani for while massaging. Yeah, he's called, he was his, he is Dira. The mood is Dira. Dira means undisturbed. Undisturbed, okay. Okay, yes. Yeah, I just wanted to know the name of the quality. Dira. Dira. D-H-I-R-A, Dira. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Also, Maharaj, uh, while whenever I think of Ramananda Rai, I just think of the picture, the popular picture where Ramananda Rai is looking at Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Krishna and Radha merging together. And 
Yeah, that's a beautiful part of the pastime where the Lord revealed who he was to Ramananda Roy. He revealed that he was Radha and Krishna in one form. Mm -hmm. That picture is very beautiful. Yeah, this intimate, this is very intimate association between Ramananda Roy and Lord Chaitanya. Very deep, very much connected to their relationship in the spiritual world. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, uh, Vrindavaneshwari Vishaka Priya, for your comment on Sri Ramananda Roy. Anyone else? Hare Krishna Maharaj. I'm wrong. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances, Maharaj. All glories to God. All glories to you. Uh, Maharaj, I have a very... Um, I don't know that uh, uh, that's a, a valid question or not, but uh, my child asked me about uh, Radha and Krishna. When I was mentioning him about Radha and Krishna, so the generation uh, of today they already take they, they really don't have a, you know, so much uh, deep understanding about this. Even we tell that even uh, big speakers and philosophers, they avoid talking much about the relationship of Radha and Krishna because that is beyond the understanding. So how do we introduce that uh, to uh, uh, little children who really don't have that idea at all? <laughs> well, you can use, you can try different ways. Because as, as for uh, the generation in present who are really ignored and maybe they are, that, that is what is we see around us, uh, the ignorance and you know, Rajasic people. So the terminologies are not very, uh, you know, happy to hear. Sometimes they, if, if you talk about Radha and Krishna to a seven or eight year child, they immediately say, oh, that's the, you now Radha is the girlfriend of uh, Krishna. But that is not how I want to introduce it to my children. And my my well, family. And I, we do, in ISKCON, we do have books for children describing some of these leelas in a very childlike presentation. Um, you might consider that, where they can just read on their own, trying to explain Radha and Krishna is not so recommended to such young kids because how would you explain it? You can't, even, even the people who are adults, they can't even understand what to, what to speak about children. The children yes, have a exactly. certain- Children have a certain innocence about them where they can learn, but I would do it in the form of, you know, give them a little child's book. We have many children's books. There's a whole series of children's books. I think they did a, they did a, whole, a whole thing on the uh, Krishna book. They took Krishna book stories and made them into books for children. 
Okay. I'll look for them, Maharaj. Thank you. Yeah, they're available. There's a lot of kids, a lot of children's books that are available in, in our society, many. I have some, but I was just wondering how to introduce uh, this uh, this thing. When my child was asking, I just did not, did not continue the topic because I was mm -hmm. looking for the answer actually. Yeah, uh, basically you have to be a little bit straight and say, well, it's very hard to understand when you grow up, you'll understand more. <laughs> Let them know they, it's not it's something they can't understand at this age. Yes, Maharaj, I think that would be a better answer. Mm -hmm. I think my child can understand that. Thank you for that. And you can't change it around to make it material because then it ruins the whole thing. Yes, yes, exactly. That, that was what I was, I didn't want to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna devotees, is there anyone who would like to share anything or ask any questions? Guru um, Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you Guru Maharaj. Thank you for this class on uh, Ramananda Roy. Ramananda Roy was from a Shudra community, that means a much lower social uh, class. So how did he become the governor? That's one question. And then how did he uh, reach a such a level of understanding of uh, Vedic tattvas that uh, he reached that? How, how did he gain those spiritual qualifications also, Guru Maharaj? Well, he was from the Kayasta class. And some of Kayastas are, mm, some of them are Kshatriya, some of them are some of them are Vaishyas, some of them are Sudras. Kayasta is a type of a class of administrators. So he belonged to that Kayasta group and they were Sudras. Um, how he gained that knowledge, well, he, it doesn't talk about his early life. It just talks about the time when he met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But he he he, he is who he is. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank mm -hmm. you. He is, you know, Vishaka, appearing to assist Radharani in her mood of devotion to Krishna. Devotees, is there anyone else who would like to say anything or share? Okay, if there's no more questions, we can conclude here. Okay. Thank you so much, Maharaj, once again for enlightening us on this topic today about Amazon. Okay. Thank you so much for your time and appreciation. Thank you, and we'll see you tomorrow. All glories to Shila Prabhupada. All glories to Glories to Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, dear devotees. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare
Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Ananda Vrindavan. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Sri Devi. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you. Lakshmi. 